All right, once you have your pot, pinch pot, um, the right thickness that you want it, um, a little bit thinner than your index finger, but no thinner than your pinky finger, and the walls are even, um, it's good to go, you're gonna start adding some details. So there's a couple ways to add different shapes, different details. Um, you can make slabs. Um, this is good for flat pieces or making things like cylinders or ears on animals, um, tongues. You're gonna put a ball of clay down, maybe flatten it out a little bit with your hand, and then you're gonna wanna evenly roll it out in different directions to get a nice thin slab of clay that you can then cut things out from. Um, make sure again that it's no thinner than your pinky finger. Mine's getting kind of thin, so I'm probably gonna stop right there. No thicker than your index finger, okay? So pinky and index finger. No thinner than the pinky, no thicker than the index. All right, I've got my slab here, and maybe I'm making a frog, and I want to give him a tongue. So I'm going to cut the shape of a tongue out of my slab. Okay, I can always then form the shape a little bit more, use my fingers to try and get it where I want it. Maybe it's a little too thick. I can roll it again. And then that would go inside my mouth like that. Now, you should know you're not just gonna stick it in there. We need to slip and score, okay? So you have to slip and score both surfaces. And the rougher, the better. So I'm gonna take a pointy object or maybe this one with the nice little grate in there. And I'm gonna go different directions try and make this surface as rough as possible so that it can latch on. Okay, I'm doing the bottom of my tongue where it's going to attach to the inside of the frog's mouth. So I need to rough up the same spot in here where I want the tongue to go. Don't stab through your clay, just rough up the surface a lot. And of course we need to add water. Um, you wanna get some water on there to make sure that you get the slip part. It gets really mushy, that glue you need to attach. So wet your tool, make sure you get that slip going on along with the score, which is the scratching we just did. Then you should be able to place it in there. Really squish it together. Slip and score is a great way to attach, make sure things are secure. To make sure it's super, super attached and not gonna fall off when we heat it up, we can also blend the edge of our object. So I'm just gonna try and blend the edges without messing up my shape. I can blend the back of the tongue so that it's smooth inside the mouth, but I wanna keep my edge. See how I'm using the tool different over here? And I'm really squishing it down over here where I want it to actually just be one smooth surface. I don't need an edge on the back of the tongue like I do on the sides where it wants to stick up. And you can always go back in there and add your edges again. All right, so for time's sake, I'm not going to completely smooth this out. You will to make sure you have nice craftsmanship on your project. Um, and then obviously I could add my details in the tongue, maybe add a little fly that he just caught on there. Um, other than making slabs, we can take scrap clay and roll it into a ball for things like eyeballs. Um, you want to make sure you're getting the size right. If you start seeing cracks, make sure you use water, but not too much water, just enough to keep things smooth. Same thing again. I'm going to see where I want it. Maybe mark that spot, slip or uh, score it, which is the scratching part. Score both sides. Get a little water in there to make the slip and then make sure it's attached. If you're attaching something to the top and your clay is still really wet, make sure you hold it and support it so you don't just squish the whole shape. All right, I'll do that to the other eye. Add details. Okay, um, the next thing you can do with 
your clay to add pieces is you can make long, skinny, or long and thick snake-like shapes by rolling with your hands like this. Try to make sure it's even and doesn't flatten out on one side. And this can be um, used as a handle. I would flatten out this side. Slip and score, slip and score where it's going to attach. And I can bend it into whatever shape I need. This is how I might make my frog legs if I kept the end here a little thicker. I might create a little frog leg for the side. Okay, in this case, I would definitely scratch and score the inside of the leg and where it's going to attach before sticking it on. And then the last technique we have for adding pieces, um, we're gonna go back to that slab method for a second. If you need to make, if you're building up a lot of your shape on top of your pinch pot, like say a cylinder, I have one student making a rocket ship and he needed to make a, a hollowed out cylinder to add on top of his pinch pot base to build up his rocket. Um, you're gonna roll it out to the right thickness and cut off any extra pieces. So a cylinder is made with a rectangle that's curled up, okay? So then, depending on how big I need my rectangle, you need to figure out how much clay you need. This is a pretty small um, cylinder. And again, to attach two pieces, I need to, I'd probably cut this off, make it a little easier to attach. I still need to slip and score where I'm gonna attach. So I want the back of this piece is gonna attach to there. Make sure you get your water on there. Get it attached and then blend it to make sure that it's super secure. Your blending with your tool might look pretty messy. It's always a good idea to do a finishing touch blend with a little water on your finger to make that surface nice and smooth so that you can't even tell where you attached it, okay? So then I would have a shape that I would then slip and score and add onto my piece. Um, that's not part of the frog, that's just something else I wanna show you guys. So get creative with those techniques to figure out how to make the pieces that you need for your sculpture. Um, the last thing that we need to do is we are going to have, this is going to be the tricky part. We need to wait till our clay is leather hard. That means when I touch it, it doesn't bend like this. So mine is not leather hard, but I'm going to show you on this piece anyway. Um, maybe you'll see how difficult it is for me and why we're waiting till it's leather hard. Leather hard is just before it gets rock hard. It's not moving when you touch it, but it's still wide enough to scratch into, attach things to, cut out pieces from, okay? We're gonna use our cell phone template. I made some hard ones in case you don't have it. Um, and we're gonna mark out, you can either do this with the piece of paper you traced your phone on and draw those lines on here. Or if you use one of these thick cardboard pieces, you can just kind of do that to make sure. Uh, pay attention to how thick, make sure it's thick enough to fit your phone. And then with a knife tool or this nice little diggy tool, you're going to cut away that hole. Start out a little smaller than where you traced. See how it's wobbling? That's why we wait till it's leather hard, because it's a little easier. Start a little smaller than what you traced, because you can always cut more, but it's a lot harder to add clay back in once we've already cut it out. Now remove that piece. Um, if you have your stencil, you can stick it in there, see if your phone's gonna fit. These are pretty big. A lot of people don't have phones this huge unless it's like one of those giant iPhones. Um, so try and think about how big your phone might be. It is gonna shrink a little bit in the kiln. So try and get it to be a little bit bigger than your phone. This will go a lot smoother and be a lot less yucky looking when you guys wait till it's leather hard. 
All right, and then of course we're gonna wanna neaten up this area. So get a little water, smooth it out, make that hole nice and clean. You wouldn't want your phone getting scratched when you slide it in here to use. So slide it, in, uh, smooth it out, make it look nice. Don't make any dangerous corners. And hopefully your phone will be able to fit right in there and a downward angle so that the sound projects out the mouth or the opening. Again, make sure your name is on the bottom. I'm going to write my initials C L um, where we can see it. And feel free to add any finishing touches with your tools. Carve into your clay different designs, smooth it out, and have fun.